Another example network flow problem uh, we are going I'm going to consider is an assignment problem. Now I want to I want to warn you this problem is not uh, explained in the in the textbook so this is your only explanation for the assignment problem. Uh, so an assignment problem is a problem in which we have a classic in a classical version a number of workers uh, that we want to assign a number of jobs to and uh, in, the, in the, the simplest case you have the same number of workers as jobs and everyone has to get one job and every job has to be assigned to uh, one worker right so it's a one-to-one -one assignment uh, so in this case in this example you see I have Anne, Bob and Cindy that should be assigned one job each such that the total work time is minimized and uh, there are three jobs and the time for each job uh, depending on which worker performs it is given in the table right so as what you can see here is that Anne if she's assigned job 1 she will take 21 hours but if she's assigned job 2 takes 50 hours and job 3 thir 40 hours uh, now I don't want you to start solving it by hand I mean ma manually but actually it's quite easy to solve this problem by hand you can see um, if, if you try to assign this you of course will try to assign those jobs to those workers that have low time and uh, very easy to solve this problem I hope you realize this is just a small example in a practical example you might have you know 50 workers 50 jobs and then <coughs> solution is not obvious and using a, a model to solve it automatically and give us the lowest uh, total work time is is prefer preferable now uh, why do we minimize the total work time in this uh, example uh, we might be again interested in let's say paying the least money for the for the work if we are let's say outsourcing this work and we pay uh, those workers not salary monthly salaries or weekly salaries but we pay them actually per hour of work uh, we might we might say uh, minimize the total number of work hours because that will minimize our minimize our cost so the model here is, is very similar to, uh, you'll see that actually there is a, a network flow structure here. All we can do is, if you look here on the right hand side, network flow model, um, we can define three nodes, one for each worker on the left hand side, and three nodes on the right hand side, one for each job. Right, so A is for Anne, B is for Bob, C is for Cindy, I used those names deliberately, and then job 1, 2, 3 uh, are here, numbered 1, 2, 3. Now, um, what, else, what else do we have to do? We want to put a, a one unit of supply on every uh, node for a worker, and we put one unit of demand on every uh, node for a job. And what we want to achieve by this is want to say when there is a flow here, the flow, there can only be a flow of one unit because there's one unit of supply here and there's only one unit of demand, so it doesn't make sense to transport more than one unit. When there is one unit of flow here, it means there is an assignment of job C to worker, uh, of uh, worker C, uh, Cindy, to job one, right? If there is uh, no flow here, that means C is not assigned to to, to job one. So uh, you can define decision variables as a number of workers assigned uh, to jobs, right? Uh, workers I assigned to job J will be defined by XIJ, where I can be ABC and J can be 1, 2, 3. And uh, just remember that, of course, this number in this case can only be 0 or 1, right? So they, we actually might have an assignment that this variable is 1, and uh, we might not have an assignment that this variable is 0. Again, how do I know uh, I will not have fractions? It's the same case as in the so shortest path, right? I will never have, let's say, half a unit flowing here and half a unit flowing here because all the numbers in the constraints as you will see all the numbers in the constraints are integer and in such a case when you have a network flow model with integer numbers in constraints optimal solution is always an integer point so we will always send this one unit of supply on one of the arcs there will be one zero zero solution or zero one zero or zero zero one there's no other option the optimal solution will always be integer in this case so the model, if you write it, uh, you want to minimize the total number of hours, uh, that's just a sum product of those hours worked, and variables, variables in this case are 0 or 1, so effectively that means, right, if there is 1 here, I count the 21 hours, if there is 0 here, no assignment, I don't count the 21 hours, 21 is multiplied by 0, we add all this and minimize, this is our objective, and then we have constraints, and for every node, right, again, we have 6 nodes, we have 6 constraints, 
node A, B, C, no, uh, node 1, 2, 3, right, 6 nodes, 6 constraints, and for every node we write, well, we could have written inflow minus outflow, uh, now in this case total supply is 3, total demand is 3, so we say equals BI, but I actually again have the simpler version of the first three constraints. If they were inflow minus outflow, what would we have? Uh, there is no inflow to A, so it would be 0, minus outflow, so it would be minus XA1, it would be minus XA1, minus XA2, minus XA3, and it would be, would be equals minus 1, because supply is uh, here indicated by a negative 1, so it would be negative with uh, uh, minus for all variables, and then equals minus 1, so you see this is an equivalent format, and this one is easier, more, more intuitive to understand, and it means basically that the outflow of this node must be equal to 1, because Anne can uh, work on one job on and then the same thing for Bob and for Cindy, each of them can provide kind of his or her work for one job uh, only. And then for the job nodes, this is actually inflow minus outflow. Inflow is, for this uh, uh, job 1, inflow is uh, xA1, xB1 and xC1, you can see the sum here and there's no outflow, so minus nothing, and equals to demand of this node is equal to 1, you can see the same uh, constraints written for job 2 and job 3, and then uh, there's no uh, maximum or minimum value you have to define. Uh, actually, you right, uh, you, all that you need to define is that the lower bound for all variables is 0. Note that uh, you could actually define an upper bound on all variables uh, 1, so we could say all xij's are less than or equal 1, or between 0 and 1. However, this is not necessary, because due to the supplies that we have and demands that we have, we are not going to exceed uh, the, the amount of flow, um, uh, we are not going to exceed one on any arc, one unit of flow on any arc, so this is not really necessary. So as before in transportation problem, I have prepared here uh, a, 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 an Excel spreadsheet for the assignment problem, and so all I need to put here is the data for the hours uh, worked uh, if, if if a worker is assigned a job, how many hours will they work on this job? And uh, I hope you notice that this problem is actually equivalent to, or a special case of a transportation, right? Because we really have a, a, a transportation problem here, except that now instead of having a large number of units of supply and demand, we have only one unit of supply here and one unit of demand. So you can see that assignment problem is a special case of a transportation problem, uh, like the Tropic Sun. So you'll see that the structure here of the model in Excel will be very similar, right? We have, instead of having uh, the, the costs, now we have hours, and I'll again copy the structure here um, of the table to have the variables, and I'll call them assignment, right? These are the assignment variables, the number of workers assigned to, to every uh, employee, the number of, uh, sorry, number of uh, employees assigned to the, the jobs, and of course we'll expect this to be either 0 or 1, so now if I have this I can say total hours will be calculated as some product here of those uh, hours and the assignment variables which will be 0 or 1, so that's my, that's my objective function. Right, and then what do, we, what do we have for the constraints? If we check the constraints, we want to say, well, Anne has to be assigned exactly to one job, the same Bob and Cindy, and each job has to be assigned exactly one worker. This is, you, if you see, f uh, the outflows for each node on the left-hand side. So if you look here, this is outflows from Anne are to job 1, 2, 3. These are the variables that we are adding here. So we'll have, right, uh, the sum here. Right, is the uh, what you could say um, number of assignments of for worker assignments for worker. Okay, a little bit big the name, and so this this right. If I put here one assignment, I'll have one uh, assignment of worker. I can't have two because that will give me two assignments, and I only can have one. Right um, now, of course. This sum is, is this is exactly the same as before, right? We had a total number of bushels shipped from a place. Now we have the total number of assignments of and to any job 
but it's the same function. And then the same thing we can say assignments for job, right? We can say assignments for job. For job one is the sum of those variables in the column, right? And again we can format it and drag it here and you see it will work for any job, job three, and this is horizontal sums, right? So all we now have to say is that those sums, all of them are equal to one, those sums are all of them equal to one, minimize the total hours, add the non-negativity. So I'll go to the solver, I'll say minimize total hours, minimize, don't forget to minimize, view maximize, you'll get the most expensive assignment. And then by changing the assignment variables, and then we say subject to assignment for worker uh, equal to one, assignments for job equal to one, and we say non-negativity. And as I told you before, you could have add, you could, you can also add here a constraint that those assignments must be less than or equal to one, and you could actually add a constraint that they must be integer. But uh, I don't recommend that because it is these are redundant constraints. We should anyway get integer values here if you use the simplex method, and this is a network flow problem. So if I solve this now, uh, I get an optimal solution. As you can see, all constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. I click OK, and I can see the ones where I have one. Let me clean this a little bit. I'll, I'll delete the zeros, right? zeros when I delete it will be clearer where the solution is. So if I delete the zeros you can see this is one, this is one, this is one and that means Anne is assigned to job one, Bob is assigned job three and Cindy is assigned to job two. Some of you might have seen it because these are the lowest possible uh, hours for Anne, job, Bob and Cindy. It's not always uh, so obvious, but this is an optimal solution that was actually in this small example very obvious. So as you can see, assignment problem is a special case for the uh, for the <coughs> for the uh, transportation problem. And this is an interesting thing because you see a network flow problem. When you have a network flow problem, we said transshipment is a network flow problem. Special case of it is transportation and then special case of transportation is an assignment problem and we, we just add additional restrictions on what the model can contain. 